Okay, so this is the second segment of Lecture 8, which is about the iron carbon phase diagram about steels. And um, uh, so most commonly we use steels. Uh, the most common engineered material used in the world is actually concrete, but the most common material after concrete is uh, steels. So everything from the chair you're sitting on most probably, to your car, uh, to buildings, everything is made out of steel. Um, and steels are based on the iron carbon phase diagram. They're alloys of iron with carbon, and there are some other bits and bobs in there as well. Um, so this is what the iron carbon phase diagram looks like, at least at the iron rich end. Um, Iron is, is funny in that it has three different solid phases um, for pure iron. You first have a, there's liquid above it, then you have a, a delta iron, which is a BCC iron, and that's got a very restricted range of solubility for carbon, and exists over only this sort of range from 1400 or so degrees C to uh, 1534 degrees C. Then you have an FCC austenite phase that has a lot of solubility for carbon. You can get up to 2 weight percent carbon into it that exists over quite a wide range down to 910 degrees C for pure iron. And then you have another BCC phase called alpha ferrite and this gamma phase is called austenite. So and then the other common phase that we think about here is the cementite phase, which is over here, it's the composition of Fe3C, and that means it has a, a, a in weight percent, rather than being 25 atom percent carbon, that translates as 6.7 weight percent carbon, as we learned earlier in the course. So uh, steels at room temperature would be composed of alpha ferrite and cementite, mostly, um, but they would quite often be processed in this austenite regime. Um, and in between, so if we were high carbon contents, we also have a, an austenite and f cementite region, we have an austenite and liquid region, um, we might go through the delta and liquid and delta and gamma regions, for instance, as well. Um, but those w typically will be at, uh, 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 carbon contents that are less than uh, this number here, less than 2 weight percent carbon. So most steels will have entered the pure austenite regime and will have been there for some period of time that's sufficient for them to form have formed homogeneous that is all even composition austenite grains so mostly we're going to consider uh, only this region of the phase diagram this region down to 600 up to about a thousand degrees C and up to about one and a half or so weight percent carbon and so we're considering then a system that has austenite, ferrite and cementite in it and that undergoes what's called a eutectoid reaction here at this point at 0.8 weight percent carbon. That's the same as the eutectic, we can see a eutectic there between the liquid and the austenite and the Fe3C. It's the same except it's between three solid phases. This is between a liquid and two solid phases, that eutectic point. This eutectoid point is between a solid phase, austenite, and two other solid phases, alpha and Fe3C. So we're just going to consider that region of the diagram, which we'll now expand um, into a, a bigger version, which is the one we're going to work with for the rest of this segment. So this is the zoomed in version of the iron carbon phase diagram where we're just looking at the uh, transition from austenite to ferrite that happens here at 910 degrees C. The eutectoid, which is where austenite transformed to alpha plus Fe3C for this 0.8 weight percent composition. And we have an alpha plus gamma region and a gamma plus Fe3C and our alpha plus Fe3C region. So we've just zoomed in there. So the first thing would be what happens at this eutectoid point? So for a steel with this eutectoid composition, eutectoid. So a steel with that composition, it transforms from austenite grains to a, an assembly of uh, alpha and Fe3C. So say it w we were here at this temperature, call that uh, temperature uh, A, say. Um, above the eutectoid, something above 723, and there at that temperature we would all be austenite grains. And then when we transform through that transformation and go to the alpha plus Fe3C, what do we form? Well, we form lamellae, uh, that is plates, 
Um, so lamellae um, of alpha and Fe3C alternating like this. They're actually very, very fine. So we have, and they'll tend to be of similar orientations across a, a, a good region of an entire prior alpha grain. So this is, say, our alpha and the plate, the black bits are Fe3C plate. And that microstructure is called perlite. Because under the right conditions, when it's etched correctly, it can look kind of pearlescent um, as a microstructure because of the, the length scale of this is the same, similar to the wavelength of light. Um, so that's what happens for the eutectoid composition as it goes through this uh, eutectoid temperature of 723 degrees C. So the perlite grows, if you take this grain boundary and we zoom in there, say that's our grain boundary, what happens is, is that you um, grow, say you're growing uh, uh, an alpha plate, so we grow some alpha, um, and that will reject carbon into the adjacent regions. And that will then nucleate some Fe3C. And that will suck in carbon, actually, from the adjacent region. So you'll then get another region of alpha growing, another region of alpha growing there. And, they'll, and as they're growing, they'll also reject the carbon in, if you like. And so you'll get another region of Fe3C there, and another region there. So this is our Fe3C, those dark bits, those shaded bits. Um, and so what we have is a cooperative growth of alpha and Fe3C plates. They're going out from the grain boundary as alpha rejecting carbon and forming Fe3C in the, its surrounding region. And those have a characteristic wavelength, and that's called a colony growth mechanism. So they're growing as one collective. What the microstructure looks like is something like a cabbage if you like, that's been sliced through. So the microstructure is alternating plates that are growing together. Uh, they're not totally flat, but they are flat on, an, on a sort of over quite large length scales. These are, and these are very, very thin. So the microstructure, oops, um, the microstructure of perlite looks something like this. Um, what you have is uh, these alternating plates. The Fe3C parts are very, very fine, um, and the alpha is relatively thick. Um, and you have alternating plates of them forming this perlite structure. And that's what happens for the eutectoid steel. Now, moving on from there, we have another situation, which are so-called hypo-eutectoid steels. So let's draw the... So guys in this region here, all the way up to 0.02, are called hypo eutectoid steels. So they are to the left, to the lower carbon content. Hypo is lower, sleepy, not very much. Um, they are hypo eutectoid steels. Um, and they do a different thing. As they c transform, if we take a, a composition, say, uh, say one here, well, what will happen? Well, up at this temperature here, we'll be back in our, uh, in our pure gamma grains. So we'll have a microstructure that looks, say, our three gamma grains, three austenite grains. And then at this temperature here, then we'll start to form some alpha of this composition. And we'll grow the alpha of that composition, typically at the grain boundaries. So we'll grow some alpha that will then grow out something like that at the grain boundaries. Um, and then 
uh, as we're down here, this, this alpha will thicken and grow and it'll get its carbon content will go up until it gets to that maximum solubility of 0.02%, 723 degrees C. And then the remaining austenite will then transform according to the eutectoid reaction. So the remaining austenite that's here at 0.88% carbon uh, in equilibrium with this, that and we could do a lever rule to get that the, the fractions of them at that temperature, that remaining austenite, this stuff here, will transform to a mixture of alpha and Fe3C through the eutectic reaction and form that perlite in between. So that's our alpha plus Fe3C perlite. Um, and that's what will happen for a uh, hypo-eutectoid steel. And that happens, that final transformation happens as we go through this eutectoid temperature. So for all temperatures below that, we'll get a microstructure that looks like that. And uh, on a micrograph, it looks something uh, like this. And uh, here you see you've got the, the white alpha grains that were at the prior going boundaries of austenite. And then you've got a microstructure of the perlite in between of the austenite that transformed at the eutectoid temperature. The final set of compositions we can consider are ones to the right of the eutectoid. So ones that are over here. And they're called hyper eutectoid steels. So hyper means lots, so they have more carbon in than the eutectoid composition. So they're compositions with more than 0.8 weight percent carbon. And they're still ones that enter the fully austenite field. So they are, that's a steel as opposed to a cast iron. So it has to enter the austenite field, that is it has to be less than 2 weight percent carbon um, to be a steel at all. And that's called a hyper eutectoid steel. And it will undergo, again we can think about what, what that would do. Um, and so we take a composition, say one over here, this one at 1.2%. 1 so that will be all austenite or gamma at temperatures above this temperature, above this one here. Um, and then at this point it will start to form some Fe3C and it'll probably form it again at the grain boundaries. Because Fe3C is over at 6.7%, um, it actually uh, takes up quite a lot of carbon and we've only got a little here, so the, the Fe3C that forms tends to be quite narrow. But we could do something like that and then we'd have some grain boundary cementite. Um, and then we'd have that and the amount of it would grow as we came down in temperature all the way until we got to 723 and then our austenite would be at 0.8 weight percent carbon and our Fe3C would be over at 6.7 and we could do the lever all to get the volume fraction. And then when we drop down from this temperature to this temperature that austenite that's at 0.8 would undergo the eutectoid reaction again. something like that, and that's our perlite of Fe3C plus alpha. Um, and so that's what happens for a hyper-eutectoid hyper steel. And its micrograph looks something like this. You see you've got the narrow grain boundary films of cementite, and then you've got the perlite in between. And those are essentially your three types of steels, hypo-eutectoid, eutectoid, and hyper-eutectoid. So the hypo are the ones with less carbon than the eutectoid composition, and hypo are the ones with more. And in fact, most steels are actually hypo-eutectoid steels. And what we'll do then in the uh, last segment in the next lecture is think about put that together with TTT diagrams and think about Martin sites and what happens not in equilibrium. But at equilibrium it's just the same as we've seen really before, except that rather than being a eutectic, i.e. a liquid transforming to two solid phase, it's a eutectoid, that is a solid austenite transforming to two solid phases, alpha and Fe3C. And that's it for this segment. <laughs>